they're moving forward, they're being successful. Transportation infrastructure, and particularly transit infrastructure, is critically important to our success from an economic perspective. When we look at it from that competitive scenario, we talk about the issue of jobs. We talk about the issue of access to jobs. Very things that, that people are struggling with right now, being able to get to work. We've got a groundbreaking this morning for the winding of the final segment of 40th Street. <laughs> you see, a former mayor had promised the widening of 40th Street to the residents. The only problem is that former mayor was Nick Nusio in 1960. <laughs> That's how long, remember him, Mark? That's how long it has Fairly. taken. <laughs> and you know how much the widening of 40th Street cost by the time we're done? $110 million. People talk about rail being expensive. It's roads that are expensive. You know the one interchange over by the airport? Just the interchange, $240 million. $500 million to wipe that segment of the interstate that, you, that leads to St. Petersburg. Roads are expensive. First you have to ask yourself, what if we don't do it? So just picture Brandon, picture Val, Val Rico, 20, 30 years from now, in a totally status quo situation. Is that appealing to anybody here? Does anybody here truly believe that this area is going to thrive economically if all you do is widen Brandon Boulevard and widen the other roads around here? It will not. And so this plan, which is about a $7 billion plan over a 30-year period, but the, the tax is not intended to sunset because this is intended to be a permanent investment for permanent change would involve 45 miles of rail, including a rail line out to Brandon, it will involve a greatly enhanced bus system, which includes better express service, flex service, circulators, every kind of modern bus service that you can imagine. For being the nation's 53rd largest city, we have an anemic bus system. It is fact is, it has been underfunded. It is funded by a half a mil of property taxes, which is continually declining in value. So you get head of a bus system with a growing population, and you give it a funding source which declines in value every single year. And so all they can do is cut back on service. And then people say, we have a very poor bus system. No one rides transit. Because it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Of course you have a poor bus. No one rides transit. Very few people ride transit. Because it's not a robust bus system. Even so, even though it is not a robust bus system, David, how many people ride Heartline every year? 13 million last year. 13 million trips with the kind of bus system that we have. Imagine if we actually had a sophisticated, modern, up-to-date bus system with express bus, with BRTs, with circulators, with flex. Imagine Brandon one day with light rail that comes out here. Will you have more jobs? Of course you will. By 2035, those roads will still be constrained. So I guess we can take the L.A. strategy, which would take them out to maybe 18 lanes, which actually some have talked about. We don't have that money, and I don't think anybody wants to live or drive on an 18-lane highway. Whether it's Bruce B. Downs, Lithia Pinecrest, we don't want that. And what a number of us have done, and you have done, is we've explored other options. And it's not to abandon our roads, but it's to find a way to make the best use of the existing right-of-way and the existing roads that we have. In mixed use, an area where there was no real economic development or activity, and now you've got condominiums, you've got restaurants, bars, movie theaters, new places for people to go, people that were places where people can live. And that, that to me, was just screamed out the value. We were in Charlotte about a week or so ago, standing on the blue line. Looking at $1.2 billion, Vic was there right there, looking at the looking at the $1.2 billion within a quarter of a mile along the blue line of new economic activity, where they had been bringing in government, government revenue of $25,000 a year, now bringing in $25 million. That's the type of revenue that comes with this type of economic activity, which will then provide relief for the taxpayer who himself can't support all the services that we need. So now the question is when? Some have said we need to wait. We had an opportunity in 1998-99, and we punted. We had an opportunity again in 2002, and we punted. Now here we are, 2009, soon to be 2010, looking at what I think we all know we ultimately will have to do. 
Every person I've talked to who's opposed this has come up to me and said, Mark, okay, I get it. There's value. We ought to do this. But should we do it now? And my response is, for the future, when 10, 15 years we look back and ask ourselves, what did we do when we knew we were faced with high fuel prices, congestion, constrained roads? If we say, well, you know, we had enough, we thought the cost was too high. So we handed it off to you. And now it's your responsibility. The cost will be so high, and I think they'll look at us with a little bit of, I think, just sadness that we didn't have it within us to step up to this. So I really hope, again, that we'll step up and do the right thing.